Okay, record. Screencast rolling. Now I'm gonna get the get the camera up and rolling. And clap for sound cue. Mic's up, lights ready, camera in, in front of me. Okay, so this is our so introduction, this is our design sprint on the icons. What we're trying to do is get more as you know as we go along with open source ecology, get more and more people involved in collaborative processes. So here we're experimenting on two fronts. One is the collaborative icon process, which which um, we have developed a process for, and which where where we're actually doing a short video, an explainer video on this process to show how this process works. Now, part of that to to that we're actually going to add the actual video that we're creating, we're doing it collaboratively. Uh, we're not really familiar with any excellent open source or really accessible collaborative editing, like video editing softwares, but it would be really good to work out a tool chain using commonly accessible tools such as YouTube and editing programs such as Caden Live. So in this process, Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking this, first of all, the screencast using Record My Desktop. It's a piece of software that's found in Ubuntu. It's called Record My Desktop. I just selected this desktop that you see here. And I'm recording that. I'm also recording a little bit on the camera in front of me so that I could mix those two up. And then go to Caden Live, which is an open source multi platform video editing, nonlinear video editing software, which I'm showing in my screen as it loads up here. But basically, Caden Live, this is what it looks like. I'm just catching a screencast of that's a blank project page into which you can start dragging in assets like uh, so forth. Anyway, I'm going to quit out of that. But using that process, one application of that would be, okay, if, if save changes, no. Okay, if we're doing an explainer video, can we get different people to collaborate on that? Because there's many different parts, very useful parts that can go into a video. I mean, it's a it's a complex process that, you know, in, in video production, there's many many people that can contribute to that process from, from sound, voice, graphics. I mean, actual content, other media assets, special effects, or whatever. And let's push the limits on what, what we can do in terms of that, as we go forward with OSC to do a lot of. Uh, explainer video which is going to be critical to get more people on, involved in a rapid fashion so explainer videos are a really useful and tight way to be able to communicate complex things fast you know and, and that's one of the things we're running into like for example with the aquaponics working group i think uh one of the blocks in terms of getting a lot of people involved was that it's just hard to explain what you're doing in a rapid time if it's text and that's why you want to try the videos such as this video for doing um, the icons uh, an instructional video on icons okay so let's go with that I'm gonna cut my camera off because actually uh, there's a lot of uh, that takes too much memory so I'm just taking a little bit right now um, so I want to explain this process for video editing so so using Caden live what we can do is share a project file so so we can upload materials into YouTube but share project files within Caden Live so that as long as the material is up online then anybody can participate in editing it well how does that work we want to document this process fully right now we're just experimenting but um, the issue there is that you have two items one is the actual how you edit and cut all the information around a, a clip that could be gigabytes right so you can't just share the gigabytes of memory but it's easy if you just upload things to YouTube and then the people who are editing they can download the material and therefore you have one the project editing file which is a Caden live file that you just save on your desktop which refers to all those pieces of assets like like the graphics the uh, the videos so what I'm proposing is that we we use the Caden Live project file where only the images and different different images that we use within the edit file are shared like as an upload online but the rest things like the video are placed on YouTube so that the person who's editing the the video can download it from YouTube and therefore 
you don't have the issue of how do you share huge, humongous files over the internet. So exploring, sharing one, a small Caden-like file that might be, you know, 10, 20, 30 megabytes or whatever, depending on how many images you have in there. And then there's the the big massive YouTube, which is hundreds of megabytes up to gigabytes that you can just download if you're editing video. Because the Caden Live project file itself, that's only like a hundred or a few hundred bytes. Like, okay, I'm looking at my screen right here. I did this little test of editing and the, let me see, the properties of this file, it's only 13 kilobytes. So basically the information of what's in that file, the 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 edit, the edit information right now is 13K, whereas the actual graphics, the, the video, actual video, that's like hundreds of megabytes. So what I'll do is, um, what I'm gonna do in practice here, so so Jean-Baptiste, so he has put up a video on YouTube, which um, I downloaded, and um, it's somewhere else here, but basically I'm gonna, in the screencast, okay, so I, down, I went to Jean-Baptiste's video file that he he did an instructional on the icon creation process okay so I'm, i have that in one window i just downloaded it uh so that i can put it combine it with my introduction so i, I made another video myself like a 30 second to one minute introduction i i did that and i put it into the caden live editing so so i got the media from jean baptiste and my local media that i generated here by recording my face and, and voice over and stuff like that um, so now the next step, if we go to the, um, so actually let's go back to the modular iconography file. We talked about the explainer video in it. So here, here's the link. So click on that. That's where we talked about the explainer video process. So, so let's see if this actually works. So, uh, you know, just, just a little experiment between myself and Jean Baptiste if it if it works out then we can involve more people in it but so far we've got a so if you look at page if you guys look at page 3 explainer video um, can you guys click on that file so so you get into the I, I sent it through the chat box of the Google Hangout so if you click I don't see you guys in there yet but basically the screen caps cast was captured by Jean um, so I'm going to put a link to that into our working document just to experiment with that. Can you guys get into that document? Yeah, there you yeah. are. Okay. Okay, there you are. So so there's the link to the... Let's see. Um, more link. Okay, so I just linked to the video that Jean just made. And... I'm actually still uploading the video that I did with my face, um, but I'm going to put a link to that. And then there's a basic Caden Live edit. Uh, okay, well, actually we're not. Um, so, so we we call that without any editing. So I mean, actually Jean Baptiste he, he did edit that in Caden Live, but it doesn't matter because I downloaded what he finished. So therefore, the source is not editable. Just what I download is now editable. Um, Okay, so I used Caden Live to edit it, and what I'm going to do right now is put a link. Um, I'm going to upload the Caden Live file to a common place, like, so I'm going to just put it at, I'm going to put a link to Caden Live. Um, oh, there's a Caden Live file pl place there. Um, so I'm gonna put a link to where I put that, so you can actually download it. And then when you download the Caden Live file, then um, with the information within the file, and when you pull down the my video clip, because you already have yours, then you'll be able to do it. And you'll see the file name when you open up the Caden Live file for what file the video files have to be. In this simple example, I I put just like March and MP4, and then Jean Baptiste. Um, mp4 for the file names just so we can get this get this going okay but anyway um so let, let's let's try this this is kind of confusing as we're working this out but but let's let's do this because i think it's worthwhile to to develop collaborative editing so i'm going to put a link called open source ecology.org slash wiki slash collaborative edit test 
So if you go there, there's nothing in that page yet where I just added the link. I'm gonna just upload my Caden Live file so that Jean, you can download it. Or um, Chris, you could also download that if you if you like. Because actually, um, feel free to test this along with us. So in the collaborative edit test, um, I got a bunch of things going up my computer, so it's a little slow right now because I'm uploading that video. Um, okay, file colla, collab edit test dot caden live. I think the the file format is dot caden live. Um, let's see. Yeah, Caden Live files. It's called yeah collab collab test dot Caden Live. Okay, I'm gonna upload that. Save page and upload it. Upload the Caden Live file. So Caden Live is um, I don't know if Chris if you ever heard of that, but that is um, it's the best not only a video editor for that's cross uh, cross platform that's open source. It's for Linux, for Windows, for Mac. Um, that appears to be the most developed one. Um, okay, so I'm uploading the Caden Live file. Um, no, actually, I need to zip. What I need to do is actually zip the file, the Caden Live files, because it's got a folder with some of the graphics in there, uh, and that's what I'm gonna zip to you guys. Okay, so I need to compress that. I'm gonna compress the Caden Live file. Dot zip. Uh, put on my desktop. Uh, so I'm gonna upload the zipped file. Actually, I have to change that. It's going to be a zipped file. I'm going to edit this. Oh, this is... Okay, edit. Call up edit test.zip. Okay. See if I can upload that. Properties. Well, that's only it's only sixty two K for the zipped file. Okay. Um Okay, so if you click on the um, in the working in the working explainer video document, the modular iconography, the Google presentation, the Caden Live file, if you click on that, you're going to be taken to the page on the wiki with, where I just uploaded the collaborative editing test. So click on that and download it. Um, right click and save save link as. Collab, collab edit test dot zip. Um, I'm gonna unzip it on my desktop. Is that working for you guys? Are you kind of following it or not really? Yeah, I'm following it. Okay, so if you open up now, if you unzip the file, and then now, now this is where you have to have Caden Live. So, Chris. You, I suppose you don't have Caden Live installed or anything. Um, if you if you would like to install, then you can actually open up this Caden Live file in the movie editing software, and let's see what's it give us. Um, clip is in Val. What do you want to do? Keep as placeholder. Keep us placeholder. Okay, so when I opened it up, what happened was it opened up the actual edit file as it should. It opened up the images that were in that folder, but it also said it can't find the video files, which are on YouTube. Naturally so. So it said, so I, I, it had a dialogue. It said, do you want to save a placeholder? And I said, yeah, save those files as placeholders. So now what you need to do is go to YouTube or Jean, if you have your original file, actually you should do that with your original file that you uploaded to YouTube. 
the okay because that file should be the total placeholder for that place um, for the file even though okay so the, listen to this even though I uploaded your file um, no I downloaded it from YouTube and therefore I think the way YouTube works it doesn't let you download the absolute original it, it compresses that a little bit so I use the compressed version now because the compressed version should be identical in length your original file should also work so if you put now your original video file into the folder that you just downloaded from me then that clip should actually be put into the the Caden Live editing file and you should be able to edit that video so check if that's possible uh, did you follow that and is that possible for you to do that Okay. Um, were you able to open up the Caden Live file? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Uh, maybe try just clicking, extracting that Caden Live folder, and inside the folder is the .caden Live file. Just see if that works first. Because if we don't, I mean, you can't go any further. Right. I'm actually having another problem. Oh, what's yeah, that? It's not really. Um, my shared folder, right? Because I downloaded on my PC that has that's running Windows. Yeah. And I'm trying to find that file in the shared folder that I created so I can, because I'm running uh, Ubuntu in a in virtual box. Okay. Oh, so you're not running um, Caden Live within Windows? You're running on Ubuntu? Right, I am, but it, I'm running it through virtual box. Oh, you're running it through VirtualBox. I see. Okay. So, okay, well, that's a piece of info. Okay, so that's, you know, complications. But why haven't? Why didn't you want to do Caden Live within Windows itself without, without Virtual? Well, I didn't actually know. I, I didn't know you could do that, actually. You can. So I, I, you, I suggest you probably do that because if you're virtualizing it, then it's probably going to be slower. And, and for video, you need all the speed you can get. Um, let's see, does Caden Live exist for, for Windows? Uh, the last I checked it did. Let's, let's take a look at that. Caden Live for Windows. Downloading and installing Caden Live. Let's see if it has that ready. Yeah, I would actually suggest that you go to that because I mean, if the virtual part, I mean, yeah, I would, I would just stop, stop and just download uh, for Windows, really. Um, unless you just want to try this, see if you can find that. Okay, so downloading Caden Live. Oh wait. Using Windows. Discover Caden Live without installing. Oh I see, I see. It looks like um for Mac ports it does have it for Mac OS X. Right, the Mac PC, right? Oh yeah, so Oh so um, so I, I found the file, I'm o i opened it and a window appears that says clip problems, right? And yes. it says Project file contains missing clips or files. Yep. Right, and so there's a list of five files. One is marching.mp4. The other one is my 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 video. Uh huh. Okay, so if I click on my video, I should be able to replace that with use placeholder. Yeah. Now, were you able to? I'm surprised you don't even get the images. Did you open up the? Uh, Caden Live files while the Caden Live file itself is in the same folder. It has to be in the same folder as the graphics images. I basically did the OSE logo, the CC by SA sign, and the open hardware logo in the same folder. Right, it is in the same folder. Okay, and when you click on the Caden Live, it doesn't even detect the uh, image files. Okay, so I had to um, I, I had to click on search recursively. Uh huh. 
and then I found the the folder that you you had uploaded that I and I basically clicked OK and then updated so updated the the clip problem so now that the logo the by SA PNG and mm -hmm. the logo two PNG are all okay. Okay, they're right, all okay. So now it's just missing the, the two video files. Okay, so that's working so far. That's pretty good. Right, um, so far it's working. So I'm going to replace my video file now. See if that works. Okay. Um, so. Uh, just a question on Caden Live. Did you see that option where there's Discover Caden Live without installing when you're using Windows? There's two options for Windows. One is Discover Caden Live without installing, it appears like DVD Live, and then another option is use VirtualBox to run Caden Live. Right, I, I did the, the second option. Uh huh. So we might want to try out the other thing at one but but I mean if it works on virtual box I mean let's see if it does right it, it's working on virtual box it just depends on um, how much memory you have available to run Ubuntu alongside of Windows for example right? mm -hmm. okay so sort of a hardware problem well not a problem but an opportunity right R right because now I get uh, an introduction to Ubuntu as well yeah which I think it's, it's really a fantastic. Piece. <laughs> you like Ubuntu? Yeah, I had no idea it was like uh, it was this easy to use. Ah, oh, we're gonna quote that and publish that everywhere. We're recording this in this in this screencast. So yeah, I mean that's the point. A lot of people don't know that Ubuntu, it's a free and open um, operating system right, that I, exists for anybody that you don't have to pay I for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, back in 2004, or 2004 when I first heard about, or 2003 when I first heard about Linux and saw somebody use it, I was like, wow, how do you do that? Um, and then I found out actually, oh, you, all you do is just install it and that's all it is. And I remember the first couple of times I installed it, it, it was kind of like a long install process, but now it's absolutely turnkey and anyone can can use it. What I'm doing on my computer, I had I have a Dell Precision M6500. It had Windows on it, uh, so I just trashed that and um, installed Ubuntu over that. Now you can no, I actually didn't trash Windows. It's back there, but I did a dual boot system where I can use either Windows or Ubuntu. But I've never used I haven't used the Windows system for years. Now I I mean I. A lot of times when I go back into the Windows, what prevents me from using it, like typically when I go back in there, maybe I did that like six months ago, it, everything needs like updating and all that, so it's just so cumbersome that I, I just never use it anymore. Um, right. Even if there's, you know, something that doesn't, you know, I, I try to get some file that doesn't work on Linux, so I have to use Windows, but no, I just like, if it doesn't work on Linux, I said forget about it, sorry, can't do it. Um, <laughs> But anyway, uh, Linux is quite user friendly. Um, yeah, including there's actually one just a side note on we're, we're going to be hosting a, a land use planning workshop on how do you generate a land use plan for a parcel of land using all open tools. And there's this thing called OSGO, and there's this entire Linux CD that's got like 50 applications are just related to GIS which is graphical information systems like all this open source GIS mapping uh, aerial drones like all this kinda um, all this stuff related to mapping and land use planning there's a whole Linux distribution around that where it's got all the tools built in so anyway there's uh, um, they have that for Linux but anyway um, so here, back to reality here. Yeah. Um, so basically, I'm going to take some notes on explainer video. I'm going to insert another slide. Because basically, the, the framework here is 
in order to get more people on on this team which is um, if you look at page six of the modular icon presentation um, there's a schedule we said that our May goals are to continue developing numbers of people working on a team and develop a regular Saturday sprint schedule and also develop two other leaders team leaders outside of Jean that, that can help you run that um, but that's good we the video definitely fills in for that our goal for last last month on page six was to get down to like one hour one hour per icon basic goal I think we've done that Se several people have done that team of 12 gets us 12 icons well we we had a team of like six get us 50 so that's that's better uh, so yeah we're, we're going we're going okay I think the next major step is to publish a decent instructional on this and a good part is uh, like when you sent me that video I was like oh man that's 15 minutes that's way too long but I said no okay let's do this experiment because as soon as we get the workflow worked out, that's the important part. Then we can just improve it if we have the workflow, because then we can get other people involved. So it'll be good. Now... Right, so one of the things that um, we, we, we want to keep in mind for the future is when you change the file name, mm -hmm. right, like you downloaded the, the YouTube video and then you changed the name, the file name to jeanbaptiste.mp4. Mm -hmm. So when I open your Caden Live file, mm -hmm. I can't just substitute because it's it's looking for a file that's called JeanBaptiste.mp4, right? Not uh -huh. the, the original file name. Is the original not an MP4? It is an MP4, but the original file that I up uploaded to YouTube is called OSC. Okay, that's fine. So something. so do this. So so now change the name. And see if it will recognize it. Okay. So collaborative editing notes. I'm taking some notes. Um, So I'll take some notes. Uh, I'm going to actually um, uh, pretty much end the screencast so we just have a have a um, good, not too long a video for people to, to look at and saves memory. It will be faster. But yeah, just to wrap up the collaborative editing process, the, the, the notes so far have been that, okay, it appears it's working and it appears that we can get all the files transferred even though we don't share the the YouTube the large video files we can download them readily and it appears so far it's working but we're gonna continue taking the notes on how that collaborative edit process works so that not only two but literally infinite numbers of people can tag team to continuously make a video better and that would be a major major accomplishment for for collaborative video editing now there may be some other professional software that does this in some way but the advantage of using the fully open source Caden Live as well as just simple downloads from the internet means that we can modify this this process workflow any way we like so so there is an advantage of that now there may or may not be a solution that's proprietary that's expensive that professionals use to do collaborative editing that doesn't really matter what will what matters is that we develop a good workflow that works for us and if we want to create a dedicated streamlined platform for doing this later in the future we can do that but I think it's more important like from experience in this project that we actually adapt adopt it to our techniques first and then look for a solution that can match that or if it doesn't match it we'll, we can streamline whatever process we have as much as possible so so that's the typical approach we take here um, so we'll see how, how this collaborative video edit looks in this working group on, on the icons. 
we're creating a, an instructional video on how to create modular icons. So right now, for example, the initial explainer is at least 15 minutes. As we go forward, we'll edit that and people can do other you know, voiceovers or whatever or other screencasts. And if it's not good enough, we'll make it better and better until it's a high quality video. And that's the goal. So um, just like to give you an example, just like lynda.com does instructional videos. Uh, I was looking into their model a little bit to see how they do updates because matter, you know, the subject matter can change rapidly. And that's why that's another reason why you want to have the collaborative uh, video editing possibility where you have access to all the source files because if anything changes in the techniques, you can update that readily. And I was looking at lynda.com, how they do that as, you know, the best, they're like perhaps the best instructionals um, good instructional quality instructional so they're a big business but I, I was reading an article they, they definitely have issues from what I understand about making their material up to date and that that's for them it's simply very difficult to keep making those updates because that means you have to hire staff all the time um, and uh, it gets really expensive so I think actually if the open source channels for doing this get really worked out well then we can produce videos not only better than them, but um, you know, just cheaper, better, faster, stronger kind of deal. So that would be the eventual goal if this actually works. That's that's at least a vision. So with that said, we'll see where this goes with this experiment. Very simple exp experiment. Just make the road by walking, and then we invite anybody who wants to collaborate on this, if you're watching this, to join the project and help us make this better, faster. Especially people from the Caden Life project. We're looking for other people who can do open source soundtracks because we probably want to put a soundtrack on it um, and any other related tools like probably GIMP is what we'll be using for the subtitles and, and title screens. So um, and, and possibly Blender people who are into animation uh, so that we can start putting animations into, into these videos off our CAD models or whatever we do. So lots of people can collaborate on this project and or, you know, project managers, organizational people who can help us manage this project or um, help us with leading the icon graphics team or the video editing team. So that's a call out with that. I'll, I'll cut down. I'll cut the, um, the screencast for now and uh, we'll see you next time.